Welcome to Asia Global Online. My name is Alejandro Reyes. I'm Director of Knowledge Dissemination at the Asia Global Institute. Asia Global Online is the digital journal of the Asia Global Institute. Currently on Asia Global Online, we have an article called After the Nuclear Deal, China and Iran Tread Carefully by Meher D. Sahakian the founder and director of the China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research. And he has recently been selected as a 2020-21 Asia Global Fellow by the Asia Global Institute. So welcome, Maher. Um, it's very good to uh, see you coming from Yerevan in Armenia. Uh, in your article, uh, Maher, you talk about the dismay with which Iran's political elite greeted the U.S. withdrawal from the so-called Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or the Iran deal, as it's widely known, um, and it, you know, that this has rebounded to China's benefit. And, but both Tehran and Beijing, as they're kind of forging this strategic partnership, they have to tread carefully. And you, you go into you expand into the economic and geopolitical cooperation, the interests that each side has, but also the concerns and why they need to be careful because of what you describe as overlapping spheres of interest in this volatile area, the pressure coming from the US, and of course, the impact of COVID-19. Um, I'm wondering whether you could just you know, briefly um, uh, tell our viewers about the conclusions you reach in your article. Dear Professor Reyes, at first I want to thank you for this invitation. It is my pleasure. And yes, Iran is a very interesting country, which is um, always in the center of international relations uh, approximately for 40 or 40 years already. And it is because it is uh, located in the strategic crossroads and it has great influence in the Middle East, in countries such as Iraq, which it is Peking, uh, Shia, Shia, uh, Shia uh, Muslims. In Syria, it is Peking, Alawites, uh, which are also uh, some sort of uh, uh, sect which, uh, which has connection with Shia Muslims. And in Lebanon, it is Peking and helping Hezbollah. It has its influence in Palestine as well. And uh, in, uh, recently, it is also backing uh, Yemeni Houthis. So it is making this uh, country uh, uh, powerhouse in the Middle East. And for this reason, uh, of course, U.S. is disappointed. And, uh, and uh, of course, Iran cannot compete in Middle East with the U.S., but it can compete with the uh, ally of the U.S., Israel, and can make a threat for this country. And of course, uh, we must mention about Saudi Arabia as well, which is also one of the most strategic partners of the US. So for this reason, uh, Iran stood a great threat for the Israel, for the Saudi Arabia, and, for the, uh, and it is uh, in some way challenging the US and the US influence in the, in the Middle East. It is, it, is, uh, it is good for the other players. It is good for the other players, such as China, which cannot compete now in the Middle East with the U.S. because the U.S. has, great, uh, has created a great network of allies from the Arabic states and from the Israel. But uh, of course, China is coming to Middle East with its Belt and Road Initiative, making here in, uh, investments, and it is giving economic influence to China, which in the future will stand already political influence. Uh, which will have China. Uh, and Iran, ca and, uh, Iran uh, can be mentioned, but it is very important for China for the following reasons. Iran has great uh, quantity of energy sources. And we know that China is the country, and we can say that a country economy. And, uh, and these energy sources it needs for, its econo uh, for, uh, for developing its economy. And the next reason is that, that uh, as I have mentioned, in Middle East, uh, Iran is challenging the US, and it, it is giving uh, more room to China for maneuvering in, the, in, this, in this territory. And Iran is located in the very, very important crossroad, 
which is which is uh, which is connected south with north west with the east and the uh, Iranian territory China is going to uh, use for its Belt and Road Initiative. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and and the next and the next reason why China is interested in Iran because Iran has uh, 80 million population, mostly young population, which is a good market for Chinese goods, uh, for Chinese goods. So it is making uh, Iran uh, interesting for China. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, Iran is interested in, in, in China because, uh, because, as you have mentioned, the US withdrew from the uh, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Actions. So uh, if Iran withdraw as well, it will lose its, uh, it, will, uh, it will lose the support of the European Union, it will lose the support of Russia and China. And for, uh, for keeping safe and keeping alive joint comprehensive plan of actions, Iran needs China's help. And we can mention that, that uh, during uh, the negotiation in the United Nations Security Council, China helped a lot to Iran. Because every time when the US uh, was drafting new resolution on, on Iran, uh, uh, the US was writing there that uh, sanctions must be uh, imposed on Iranian energy sources, on production and uh, sellings. But China was, every time China was making some changes there, and we, uh, till uh, 2000, uh, 15, we hadn't any uh, resolutions and any sanctions by the U United Nations Security Council on, on Iranian uh, oil and gas production and sellings. Now, um, thank you, um, I, 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 I'm interested in the fact that when you went to visit, uh, you were in Iran mm -hmm. in February, and yeah. in your article you mentioned that uh, Iranian scholars and diplomats that with whom you spoke were, yes. in your words, utterly dismayed by the U.S. withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal and the EU's inability to stop that. Um, the, in, in many ways, the, the, the Iranian leader feels somewhat betrayed by, uh, particularly the reformist groups, uh, feel betrayed by the West. Uh, I'm wondering if you'd take us into your visit to Iran mm -hmm. and, and the sentiment, the, the feeling that you got there, uh, what your thoughts were about mm -hmm. meeting um, different people mm -hmm. uh, and going around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I have been there in February, in the end of February of this year. And I must say that I am going to uh, Iran approximately one time a year, starting from 2005. And, and I haven't seen Iran in this situation. The economy was collapsed, and there were great. Uh, and uh, and uh, when I was speaking with people, they have no any idea about about the future, because they were saying that uh, uh, you can see that we elected conservative Ahmadinejad, but when we saw that he was doing some problems with the West because of the nuclear program after we elected reformist Rouhani. So he, 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 he started negotiation with the West, and of course with Russia and China, and he could find some ways, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he could some, uh, find some ways after which the GSPA was signed. But they said, the Iranian people say that we do not see any, uh, uh, any changes, any changes. Uh, as they say that, uh, look, uh, when the Ahmadinejad was the president, West was trying to, to, to make a regime change. And then after when we, we elected reformist Rouhani, who made some concessions and, uh, and uh, accepted preconditions of the Western powers uh, in nuclear program, we haven't seen any changes. And yes. after West imposed new sanctions on us, <coughs> The, the, the people of Iran, they do not see any, any wave and uh, future for them. And uh, when I was speaking with, with uh, Iranian scholars and uh, Iranian diplomats, they were mentioning that uh, we, uh, we also supported Rouhani and we tried to make our uh, relations with the West better. And we thought that it will be better. But uh, as we see, there is no change. So for this, we must go back to the 
to the policy of loop to east. It means, it means that, we must, that we must develop our relations with Russia and China. And now we see that there are some changes uh, in the world order and Sino-Russian Sino tandem is trying to stand uh, one pole in the world, political economic uh, pole. And uh, Iranians were mentioning that uh, they are waiting for this moment when China and Russia will create this pole and we will also try to join to this pole. For this, they are also, uh, they got uh, observer status in Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization. Uh, and they are trying to get full membership, but the United Nations Security Council's resolution uh, are still working and they can stand full members if the all sanctions will be lifted. And they, they, are, also, uh, they, they, they are also speaking uh, about uh, standing BRICS members. They were mentioning that uh, we can stand BRICS members, and I think that it is possible because uh, when I was in Moscow and speaking with Russian decision makers, they, they were also uh, saying that we need also one Muslim country, big Muslim country. They were speaking about Indonesia or Turkey, but I think that now Iran has much more opportunities to join BRICS and, uh, and uh, introduce their, if not uh, all Muslims, but Shia Muslims. Interesting. Now, what is your sense about the stability in Iran itself? Mm -hmm. uh, particularly, you know, we saw even before the pandemic, we saw um, uh, protests on the street. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, yeah. there are questions about, I mean, there was an article uh, that's been doing the rounds about the twilight of the, uh, mm -hmm. of the regime there. Uh, what are your own mm -hmm. thoughts about the political stability, the stability mm -hmm. of uh, social stability in Iran? Uh, uh, I think that we will see new turmoils in, in Iran uh, because of the economic situation. Uh, sanctions are working on Iran. Sanctions are working. But you know, it is working on the contemporary people, common people, because uh, sanctions are harming their business, sanctions are harming their life. But the sanctions are not harming, let's say, Ayatollah's life or our politician's mm. life, but it is harming contemporary people's life. So they will go to street. And this coronavirus also uh, will give them uh, added impetus to go to the streets because there were a moment when uh, mullahs were uh, the, 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 uh, mullahs were not were not closing the, the the mosques, and many people were going there and they were saying that if you pray, it will help you, uh, and and many people were infecting that they were going to to everyday to listen everyday prize. So this uh, challenged the the, the 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 religion. This uh, was challenged the the, the authority of this. Uh, religion leaders, because now people are questioning where is the religion, where is the God? So, uh, but as we know, the Iran is the country which is united under the other the religion. Uh, it is called Islamic Republic of Iran, and religious uh, leaders are, are heading the country. So, I think that in the in the near future, and 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 there is another moment as well because. Uh, the population of Iran, they are mostly young people. They are going out, they are traveling, they are seeing the freedom of speech, they are seeing uh, the free, uh, free way of life in different countries, and they are coming uh, back to home. And uh, there are some, some religious uh, leaders who are trying to say these young people, you must, uh, uh, you, you must wear this clothes, you must speak with this kind, and they do not want to, to, to have this. And they have also, they could not also solve the problem with, with young people because they have no job. They have no right. job. They have no job. Uh, yeah, after, the, after the Islamic uh, revolution, there were, uh, it is better to say Iranian revolution, actually, because it was Iranian revolution. But after when the uh, religious uh, figures came to the power, they changed it and uh, it stood Islamic revolution. At that time, there were baby boom in Iran. And now the, these people are already uh, want to have a job and they cannot yes. find it. It is making another problem for turmoil as well. Interesting. Now, uh, Meher, uh, you, you, you have a very interesting background coming from Armenia and you travel a great deal and you've been interested in Iran. And then indeed, 
uh, you, you, you have a long engagement in China. You did your doctorate at Nanjing University. Uh, how did you get interested in China and how did you end up at uh, Nanjing to do your doctorate? And uh, where, where does this come from? <laughs> from my childhood, I was interested in non-Western countries, with Asian countries. And uh, when I was studying in, uh, the uh, in the diplomatic school of Minister of Foreign Affairs of Armenia, at that time, uh, we had a lecturer from Fletcher University, Alan Watchman, oh, and right. uh, he, he taught us about China's foreign policy. So from this time, I was very interested in China, and I decided to go and see China. And uh, one year later, I went to China business trip. I have been in Beijing, Tianjin, and Guangzhou, and I was impressed with this country, with, 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 uh, with, with this dynamic, which uh, it was developing. So I decided, and uh, I decided to, to, to find a way to study in, in China as well. And I bought a book from the airport, uh, How to Study Chinese Language. All right. And I had gone and st started to study Chinese language. Yes. And after that, I, I found scholarship at Nanjing University, and I checked that Nanjing University is one of the best in China. So I, I applied and I, I, I could get this scholarship and I came to China. I was there for five years and after, uh, after graduation, I, 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 I was back to Armenia. And uh, you know, in Armenia, we have very strong school of Iranian studies, Turkish studies, Arabic studies, but we haven't uh, any school of Chinese studies at that time, at that time. And for this reason, I, I, I decided to, to open this, to found this China Russia Council for Political and Strategic Research because China is a rising superpower and Armenia also uh, need to know how to deal with this, with this great power uh, from which uh, opportunities and some risks are coming. We must know how to deal. For this reason, I, I, I founded this foundation and uh, I created many ties with European scholars, Russian and my Chinese colleagues. And every year we are having a China-Russia conference. Many scholars are coming here and also some schools and publications which we are sending to our government as well that, and making some recommendations. Fantastic. Now, what, what was your research in Nanjing about? What, what, what was your thesis? Yes, on? as I was researching Iran and yes. uh, yeah, Iranian foreign affairs, I, I, I decided to smash it, to mix it with each other. And uh, for this reason, I wrote a thesis about China's uh, policy in the United Nations Security Council on Iranian and DPRK's nuclear issues. Oh, right, right. So it was a bit of a mashup of uh, yes, a yes. geopolitical mashup. Yes. Very interesting. Now, and um, I tried to use my uh, knowledge of languages, yeah. Persian, and, and also yeah. Chinese, English, and Russian. So one last question, uh, Maher. So uh, w w w what do you want to uh, do uh, with your, uh, you know, in your career going forward? I mean, you'll join us at uh, Asia Global Institute for your fellowship, I hope. And then um, uh, what are your plans? Because you, you seem to occupy a very kind of uh, unique position in, in, in the academic, a uh, think tank world. Uh, yes, I have hopefully coronavirus will give us uh, opportunity to come to Hong Kong. It will be great opportunity and I, I, I am looking for this to meet all of you. And uh, I think it will be good school for all of us to make our skills better. And uh, in the future, um, in the future, I am planning to continue my research in political sphere, in international relations. And we will see what will happen because life is changing uh, very fast and we will see what will happen. Yes. What, is, uh, what is the situation like in Armenia before we... Uh, we, we... Uh, now it is not so good. It is not so good. We are having approximately 400 or 500 infected a day. It is a very big amount for the country which has only 3 million uh, population. Right. Yeah. Uh, 18,000 people are infected. So uh, uh, it was uh, because uh, we have great uh, diaspora in the different countries, Armenian diaspora, Armenian com communities. And in the time of coronavirus, many of our uh, countrymen wanted to back to Armenia. 
as our government in Armenia giving uh, free, free, free health care for everyone, for every Armenian. So for this, we could not, uh, uh, we could not stop this virus because every time new people were coming and, and uh, spreading this virus. And there were also in the first period of time, there were also some mistakes by our uh, decision makers in the health, uh, healthcare industry and the Ministry of Healthcare. So, but now, uh, but now hopefully it will be good because there are strict rules in Armenia now. Uh, so we hope that next month we will have some changes. Great. Thank you very much, Maher. It's, it's lovely to see you and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your contribution. Um, may I just uh, uh, suggest to our readers that you link in to read Maher's article on Asia Global Online. Please subscribe to uh, our channel on YouTube. Please go come to the Asia Global Institute website, the Asia Global Online website to sign up for our, uh, to receive our email. Uh, and thank you again, Maher. It's lovely to see you. Yeah, Professor Reyes, thank you very much. Thank you for cooperation. It was my honor to speak with you. Yeah. Cheers, thanks. Thank you.